Hi, this is Will with My Spiritual Clarity. Today's video is about the inner critic, which is number three on the eight pillars of the imposter complex. And specifically, how can you practice self-compassion when you messed up, or when you're falling behind, or when you're chronically falling behind? How, when you feel that weight on top of you, how can you be loving to yourself? So to make this point, I want to share a story of my own from today to, uh, to, to, to make the point because with the third pillar, with the imposter complex, and so the imposter complex, I say, has, has eight parts. And the first three, the number one is procrastination, number two is overwhelm, and number three is the inner critic. And there is a lot of really amazing energy work that we can do to shift the inner critic. You're never going to get rid of it, or I, I haven't gotten rid of mine. But instead of it being this screaming uh, behemoth in your head and on your shoulder and just you know looming over you, it can become a once in a while uh, mini tornado. So I had a mini tornado this morning that I want to share about to give an example of, of the kind of work that you can do with this. So long story short, I wasn't prepared for a conversation I needed to have. It was kind of an important one for, for a specific area of my life. It was, uh, I had a phone consultation with my doctor to try to get uh, a specific test that I was recommended for my naturopath to, to get it covered under the Canadian medical system. It was a long shot. I knew it was a long shot, but I thought, well, if I'm really prepared and I've got it all ready, maybe, just maybe, he'll say yes. Well, the call came and I was not prepared because I've been sick for three days and completely fallen behind on things. I was rushing off from a previous call, uh, jumped into this phone call, not ready at all, a little bit nervous to talk to the doctor, and did, couldn't find the document on my computer that had the name of this dang test that I, needed, that I was asking to get a referral for. Couldn't even get the name. And then my computer is going so slow because I need a new computer and what an idiot I am because I've got too many uh, things open on my computer and I can't open up the document fast enough and oh my gosh, I'm not... yeah, you get the flavor. It just kept going deeper and deeper. So I get off this call with a doctor and I, I, I feel it. I, I feel the inner critic just, just not only welling up inside me but also like the, you know, the Goliath, the behemoth just over my head of you stupid piece of... <laughs> Just, it just started, and I, but I could feel it. I could notice it, and I said, oh, ah. And I put my head down in my hands, and I said something to the effect of, Will, I hear you. This sucks. It sucks not being prepared. And you've had a rough kind of week. You've had a rough couple of days. Uh, and I just want to let you know that, um, that that thing that you do where you, where you beat yourself up, uh, we're not doing that anymore and you haven't done it in a long time and even today we're, we're not gonna do it today I know that it hurts and I know that it sucks um, but we're not gonna do it for two reasons one it just doesn't work you know it doesn't work and number two you deserve better and I love you so I wanted to share with you also in, in, in our back garden here something because this, this goes back to the first video that I ever made on this topic uh, years ago, or not, yeah, but I think four years ago, called Everything I Needed to, Everything I Needed to Know About Self-Love I Learned from an Acorn. And I'm not gonna share that entire uh, story here, but here in the back of our, our garden, across this, here, I'll, I'll just show you the back. So we've got this little bridge it goes from, and it needs a little repair there, but that's the back of our house. It looks a little dreary right now in early spring. But then in the back across the little bridge, we have this patch. Now, there is nothing growing here yet, but it's going to be garlic. Well, the garlic's planted, it just hasn't come up yet. Now, we did have potatoes here last year, but the soil wasn't right for the potatoes, and, and it attracted a certain a pest, a bug that, that killed a lot of the plants. We saw an okay harvest, but not great. So the soil wasn't ready for the potatoes. So you could say uh, it was acidic or it was, it was unhealthy, it was poisoned for the potatoes. And that's what happens if you allow the, your inner critic, if you allow that inner critic to reign, if you allow that behemoth to beat you up from above or to well up inside you, everything that you plant will die. All your business ideas, all the amazing clients that are on their way to you, all the 
yeah, all the wonderful things that you've planted, they, they can't grow because you're poisoning the soil. Every time you let the inner critic rain for more than a short period of time, and like I say, none of us, I don't, I haven't met anyone who has completely done away with the inner critic. You can, with this kind of energy work and, and other practices as well, self-compassion and mindfulness, you can be at a place where it doesn't have to be this whirlwind of a thing. It can be a short experience like I have this morning. So once you can do that, once you can get it down to that, it doesn't have to be your life. It can be uh, in balance and healthy and you can have healthy soil and then your programs, your products, your offerings, your ideas in your business and in, and in your life, they can grow. So what can you do with this third pillar of the imposter complex? Well, number one, as I shared, you can do the self-talk. Um, Sometimes that works great, sometimes it doesn't. I find that it works really well if you can catch the inner critic stuff super quick, you know, within, a fir within the first minute or two, then I find that works really well. I believe in psychology they call it countering. Where I have found countering backfires horribly and doesn't work at all is if it's a chronic pattern that you've had for a while and, you know, you've already been raging at yourself for two minutes, five minutes, an hour, 10 days, 10 years, you know, if you've already been coming at yourself for a while and then you try to say something like, oh, it's okay, Will, I, I love you. I don't love you, you piece of bleep, bleep, bleep. You keep messing this up, you bleep, bleep, bleep. You know, that's, it, countering doesn't work very well. And I have found, you know, with great respect to mindfulness practitioners, I have found that that doesn't work very well. Maybe it does after 100 attempts, but I, I couldn't make it that far myself. So if you're in that camp, then I'd encourage you to try this other process. And I got it from Access Consciousness and it works really, really well. I use it with my clients all the time as a general practice. And then I'm gonna mention a specific thing that you can do, uh, which is a little bit more tricky to share through this kind of uh, general video. So the one that I got from Access Consciousness is Return to Sender. So if you've heard this before, uh, use it again, because it works really well. So you hear that voice like I heard this morning. And I say, oh, Ah, there, that's still there. Ooh. Ooh, yep, still coming up. Ah, who, who does that belong to? Whose voice is that? Oh, well, that's an easy one. That's, that's, a, that's very easy. It was my stepdad. Okay, yep, that's exactly what he would sound like. That's exactly what he'd feel like in the house when I would make a mistake or if I missed something or blah, blah, blah. Great, so everything that is, oh, ow. Always I got that from him, Ooh, ow. Would I be willing to return that to sender with love and consciousness attached? Yes, I would. So that's the general tool that you can use anytime the inner critic stuff comes up. Just use it straight away. The other one that you can do is when you get that specific voice, listen for what it, it says in detail, the actual specific words. So, uh, you know, for example, for me this morning it was, uh, well, I can't remember exactly, but we'll just say something like, um, you, you should have done better, or you should, you should be doing better. It sounds, it's pretty close. You should be doing better. Ah, okay, so I write that down. And then I run that as a clearing. <clears throat> so the belief that I, sh ow, the belief, oh, yeah, it's still there. The belief that I should be doing better. Ow, would I be willing to destroy that at the point of creation? Hmm, no, interesting, okay. Well, I'll make another video on, on that, but for now, let's pretend that it was a yes, that I came up with an energetic yes. I'd say, great, I now destroy that at the point of creation. Uh, so whatever the specific voice is, you wanna create it as a belief or formulate it in the words as a belief, and then ask if you're willing to destroy that at the point of creation. Now, if you have trouble with that, of course, reach out to me. I'd love to see you for a session or in one of our courses, and I can help you drill down to exactly what those words are, exactly what the belief is, who it came from, when it started, all those juicy details. You don't need the details, um, but it can be very helpful, especially if it's a chronic pattern. For that other part that just came up of the no, I'll make that in a separate video so we don't have a, a 20 minute long uh, video here on the inner critic. So if you'd like that, please comment below and I'll make sure that you get the link uh, once that video is made. Have an amazing day. Please do subscribe or like this video and stay tuned for videos on all the other pillars of the imposter complex. So today was about day three, the inner critic, and I'll be making videos for the other uh, eight. See you soon.